And then on to composition, who are the lenders and borrowers on Centrifuge right now? And how do you expect that to develop? Yeah, sure. So a lot of these groups were with Centrifuge from the launch of Tin Lake, and that happened in October of 2020, roughly, I think, uh, Oscari, right? Which is when you started to kind of see this growth in the initial um, real world assets being funded on chain through different pools, and then it's kind of um, dispersed or distributed over time, right? It, it's it's interesting to look at the growth, right? I think the, the, the pool that is the largest today on Centrifuge is a group called New Silver, um, that does mortgages in the Northeast of the United States. Um, there's also a group on there called Reef that does Canadian mortgages, right? So real estate is already making up close to 50% uh, of the total value lock that you see on Centrifuge today. What I think we're going to start seeing um, as we go forward is I think we're going to continue to see a lot of ESG investment. Um, and then I think we're also going to see a lot of uh, non-US investment start to our investment opportunities pop up, uh, which could be in kind of consumer loans or higher yielding um, products that fit more within the appetite of potential crypto investors. Uh, in the context of MakerDAO, um, because of the way that uh, a Maker Vault works and the way that DAI is printed and that the cost of capital is zero there, I also think you could see very low yielding debt from the real world from very big um, traditional uh, asset managers start to come to centrifuge as well. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit dispersed and diverse, I would say. Um, and it'll really be driven by buy side or investor appetite uh, for different asset classes.